All right, title of the video, WWE, a year of disappointment. And that's not just saying this entire year of WWE has been awful and there haven't been good parts, but specifically speaking, pay-per-view wise, this year has kind of been a letdown. It's more of that, a year, a year of letdowns. Let's just go through this. This is an idea I had after talking to some people about disappointing pay-per-views. And, um, I've thought of four or five that were, could have been amazing, that were let down, but I'm just gonna go, I'm on Wikipedia, I'm just gonna go through every, Royal, um, I almost said every Royal Rumble, every pay-per-view from this year and talk about it, and then leading up to last night. We start the year with... The Royal Rumble, obviously. Um, you have John Cena and AJ with a great match. And then you have the Royal Rumble that sucked. Um, you have one surprise entrant, which is Ty Dillinger. Which wasn't even a surprise, because it was obvious. And you have The Undertaker eliminated by Roman Reigns. You have Goldberg and Brock doing some sh some shit, and Randy Orton wins. Nothing special. Um, coming into that, you have a pretty big disappointment, considering that it was being built as a huge rumble with Lesnar and Goldberg and Taker. Then you get Elimination Chamber, and John Cena loses the title after one month. Um, I actually don't think I ever if I ever watched this one. I don't know why. I don't remember it. Oh, no, I, def I definitely watched it. Okay. Um, yeah. Just, I don't think this one was supposed to be anything special. And it wasn't good. Um, from what I remember. And you have Fastlane. And Goldberg wins the title in 22 seconds. Which is pretty dumb. Um, I just watched the 365 of Kevin Owens, um, and him and, his, the best part was when him and, he talked to Styles when he pulled up next to him in the car and said, hey, remember when we were champion, champions, and now we're not, and we're fucked for WrestleMania, yeah, um, but, uh, what was this, Roman defeats Braun, Roman and Braun had a great rivalry, so their matches were awesome. Um, but again, nothing great about Fastlane. Skip the takeovers, because those are all fucking amazing. And then we have WrestleMania, which I personally liked, but I was also sitting seventh row, so pretty sure if you watched it at home, you just, it was not that great. Match of the night was the first match on the regular card. Um... Which is never a great thing when it's all downhill from there. Um, Reigns and Taker getting the longest match. Oh no, the second longest match. Which the first longest match was Triple H. So that match didn't deliver. Orton and Bray only got 10 minutes. Brock and Goldberg was probably my favorite match of the night after AJ and Shane. Um, the Hardy Boys coming out was fucking amazing. That was about it. Um, that's pretty much it for Mania. A huge letdown. Com considering what it could have been, not from when the card was announced to um, how they did, because it was alright, but it could have been a lot bigger. Payback was... Braun and Roman, okay. That was fine. Rollins and Joe. Nothing really memorable. Um, yeah. There's, Bliss wins the title in probably a bad match. Because I don't remember that her and Bailey having a good, good match. Skip that. UK thing and NXT. And we're at Backlash. Nakamura's debut in the opening match. 
or sorry, pay-per-view debut, or no, it was his first match, in the opener against Dolph, already ruined Shinsuke, um, and then this is where Jinder wins the title, which was good for shock value, but overall, not a great show, I don't remember Harper defeating Rowan, Owens won by count out against Styles, and the welcoming committee defeated Naomi, Charlotte, and Becky. It's pretty bad. Usos defeating Breezango is probably the best match of that card. So, so far we're in June and there hasn't been a good pay-per-view. Uh, this one is Extreme Rules. And the five-way to determine number one contender. Joe wins, defeating Bray, Balor, Reigns, and Rollins. It's cool to see Joe win. Um, steel cage match, Cesaro and Sheamus versus the Hardys was pretty good. That lived up to the hype. Uh, Kendo stick on a pole match, Bliss and Bailey sucked. And I'm pretty sure this is the one uh, Miz and Ambrose match that was like amazing. I thought it was amazing, and Matt probably thought it sucked. So that was alright, didn't really have hype because I don't think they booked it correctly or good enough. And then Money in the Bank. Which was, could have been built up to be huge. Um, New Day and Usos, that was great feud. Carmella wins, which was great, but the match itself sucked. Um, and no, not because Ellsworth grabbed the briefcase. I actually kind of liked that. Gave him heat. And it gave Carmella heat. Um, but that's a story for a different time. Um, what was I going to say? But that match wasn't good. And then I don't remember the, the men's Money in the Bank being that good. And they fucked it up with Corbin cashing in and losing. So, And Carmella still has hers. So can't comment on how that ended. Great balls of fire. Just sounds awful. Um, Lesnar and Joe was not good. Six minutes and one F5 for Joe to lose. Um, I think highlight of that was Slater and Hawkins getting a match for two minutes. While um, Braun and Roman were doing the ambulance thing. Um, that was a great match, but also attempted murder. Um, I'm pretty sure this Miz and Ambrose match wasn't that good. Sasha Banks won via count out. 30 minute Iron Man match. That was a really good match. So the Hardys and Sheamus and Cesaro lived up to their hype. Everything else on this pay per view fucking sucked. Next was Battleground. Punjabi Prison, which I didn't think was that bad. Overall, the pay per view wasn't great, but it was alright. The flag match was kind of a joke. Like, literally, anyone could have scripted that match out. Um. Owens defeated Jericho, or Owens, Owens defeated Styles. Pretty sure this is the one where he rolled them up. Or he rolled them up off the submission and won, and everyone hated it. Um, fucking Natalia becomes the number one contender for her fucking great title reign. Sweet Baron Corbin, Shinsuke Nakamura feud. And New Day vs. Usos was probably awesome. So... Battleground, nothing special. And then we get to SummerSlam. The second of the big four. Remember, Royal Rumble sucked. Um, we have 13 matches, three on the pre-show. Um, including Usos New Day, which I still haven't watched, and apparently that was the best match of the night. I remember I was in Chicago during SummerSlam weekend, so I was watching on my phone. Um, so I'm, and I had a headache that night, so I missed the pre-show and almost forgot to watch. Cena and Corbin sucked. Natty beating Naomi, who fuck cares? Big Cass defeating Big Show with Enzo in a shark tank. Only funny thing about that, it shouldn't even have been funny, but the only good thing about that match was him squeezing out of the shark tank just to get the shit kicked out of him. Enzo, that is. Um, Orton defeated Rusev in nine seconds. Just, I'm guessing we're all glad we didn't have to sit through that. Um, Sasha won the title for the fourth time. 
Uh, Balor beat Bray Wyatt in a match nobody cared about. Um, Ambrose and Rollins winning the titles was the best part of that night. AJ beat Owens with Shane. That was fine. Not great, but fine. Uh, Jinder beating Nakamura. Um, I mean, I was, I liked Jinder's, I mean, I didn't like Jinder's title run. I thought it could have been a lot better, but I wanted it to continue. I didn't want them to just, here, Jinder, here's the title. A couple people watching India, and then, all right, we're done. We got what we wanted. It was, it was long enough, and I'm glad he lost when he lost. Um, Brock defeated Roman, Joe, and Braun in the match of the night. Um, that was a good match. That's about it. That's the only one that lived up to the hype. Tag match was good, but overall not what you want for a summer slam. If anyone remembers anything different about these pay-per-views or remembers it just as bad as I do, please comment and let me know. I want to hear what you guys think about this year. Um, we'll move on to July. Er, July. September. No mercy. I don't know why I said July. I'm still asleep. Um, this, No Mercy, was clearly not a big four pay-per-view, but built like one. Um, and it fell flat on its face. Two huge matches. Uh, Enzo and Neville and Balor and Wyatt. They just didn't live up to the hype. No, I'm sorry, not Balor and Wyatt. Miz and Jason Jordan. No, this pay-per-view sucked for what it could have been. You had the nine-minute stinker of Braun and Brock, which could have been amazing. I can't remember, was it 1F5 that beat Braun? Might have been two. It just wasn't good. And I enjoyed Reigns and Cena a lot, but everyone bitched because Roman kicked out of 5F5s, which, I mean... Okay, John maybe should have kicked out of one more spear, but I didn't have a problem with it. Um, if it was Balor kicking out of five of fives, everyone would have loved it. Or Nakamura. Or fuck, even Joe. But, whatever. Um, I can get why that annoyed people, though. Um, the five-way women's wasn't good. I'm sure Ambrose and Rollins were Sheamus and Cesaro was fine. But, man, that could have been such a great show. Then you have Hell in the Cell. Probably the only pay-per-view that lived up to the hype. Which sucks. I didn't even watch it live. I honestly don't even remember what I was doing. Um, but you had the Owens and Shane match, which was good. And Sami Zayn with the uh, the turn to uh, give the, uh, the shock. Ginger again retains. Um, <clears throat> Corbin Styles and Dillinger was pretty good. Um, Rusev and Orton was pretty boring. And then you had the Hell in the Cell tag match, which was, like, amazing, in my opinion. I don't know if it was their best match, but it was, the that was probably the match of the night. Um, so Hell in the Cell was fine. Everything else so far has been shit. Then we have TLC, another one that was built so fucking huge. Oh, God. And part of it is is bad luck with the the, uh, the illnesses. The illness also was part of it was good luck. Bray Wyatt versus um, Finn Balor would have sucked again. Um, not because of Finn Balor, though. Because um, of that other guy. Um, but Asuka and Emma really disappointed me. If you go back and watch their match in NXT London... They tore it down. Um, I was expecting something awesome here. Even with 9 minutes and 25 seconds, they could have done something a lot better. Um, at least WWE hasn't ruined Asuka yet. Um, Cedric and Rich Swan versus Gallagher and Kendrick. I don't even remember that match. Bliss and Mickey actually had a pretty good match. Um, that was surprising. I just thought they were going to have an average match. Uh, Enzo and Kaliso sucked. And then Balor and Styles was good. Um, wasn't five star classic, but it was very good. Jordan and Elias, and then the five on three handicap TLC clusterfuck bullshit. Obviously, it shouldn't have been Kurt Angle. It should have been uh, Roman Reigns, but he got sick. 
So Kurt Angle came in for no apparent reason for the storyline. They turned it into a thing. Miz helped out with saying, talking shit about Kurt. But why do they need five on three? Fucking Kane and Braun got into it. And then they didn't get into it. And then randomly Kane just beats up Braun. Then they try to murder Braun again. Yeah, it's just... At least fucking the Shield won. Even though Kurt ended up getting the win. Which is fine. Whatever. But the match was not good. Just wasn't. And then that leads us to last night. Here are my thoughts on last night. Coming in... Obviously, this could have been a pay-per-view of a lifetime. This could have been one of the biggest, best pay-per-view matches, or pay-per-views of all time, or at least in recent history. We had two shitty pre-show matches and one that I didn't even, I didn't watch any of them. I watched some of the Owen Zane one, but I had to move my PlayStation into Matt's room so we could watch the other, and um, by the time I set it up, the match was over. So, at least those four got a match. The promos before were pretty funny. But, alright, you start off with The Shield and New Day. I really thought this was... Wow, this got 21 minutes. I really thought this was going to be fast-paced. Um, and just, like, good. Just, just really good. A lot of spots, a lot of near falls. But it really just... Rob Presley said it best. Um, speaking of Rob Presley, go follow... Or go subscribe to him. Get him more subs, because he's, he's got a lot of good shit that he's showing off in his videos that you guys are missing out on. But, he said the best, he's like, I felt like I was watching that match in slow motion. And it really did, it really was slow, and not that entertaining. Glad the Shield won, though. Um, Team Raw versus Team SmackDown for the women's. Um, I'm just glad Asuka was the survivor. But... Tamina and Natty. I mean, I don't have much of a problem with Natty because she was just champion. Let's keep her credibility going, but... Wow, Tamina and Natty. The final two against Asuka. Becky eliminated immediately. I'm sure that'll set something up because somebody will be like, oh, she shouldn't be team captain. Probably a Natty and Becky feud. Um, Corbin versus Miz. I was actually pretty entertained with this match. Um... Which is probably shocking to a lot. Um, just thank God Corbin won. Because SmackDown needed the win. And Corbin needed the win. Uh, match is fine. So, so far, one good match. Or one good enough match. Then you have the Usos versus Cesaro and Sheamus. Which really disappointed me. I was expecting match of the night. I was expecting just a New Day Usos type match. And it just felt like a normal Raw tag match. No, nothing great. 15 minutes of pretty much average match. Charlotte defeated Bliss in a better match than I expected. Um, but, I don't know. I'm just not. I could make a whole rant on why I hate Charlotte. Just character on TV. I have nothing against the woman herself. But I don't like what they did with her. I don't like how they book her. I don't like how they make her act. Or how she acts. Um... But yeah, they've ruined a lot of people, a lot of women, um, over the last year. <sighs> Brock vs. Styles, me and Matt were mostly, well, Matt was really down on this match in the first opening minutes. And Brock was just destroying AJ. Wasn't even close. AJ had no offense, literally no offense. And we thought that it was just going to be a squash. And we said, we were like, why wouldn't you just at least keep Ginger in that if you're going to do it? But they made it into a good match. Went 15 minutes and 25 seconds. Ended up being probably match of the night. Um, and it was entertaining. The spot was obvious with the forearm and the F5. Pretty sure uh, Ramey texted that to us like as the match started. He's like, that's going to be the finish, isn't it? Um, but it was still awesome to see. So I'm glad they ended up doing something. And then Team Raw versus Team SmackDown. Um, let's go elimination by elimination here. First one out, Nakamura. Okay. Um, Should have been Rude. Um, and then Rude goes two minutes after. 
Um, they set it up so they could come back and help power bomb or suplex Braun through the table. Um, but Joe gets eliminated by Cena after. It was cool to see like each person had like another person you wanted to see against each other, like Rude and Triple H, Joe and Cena. Um, even like I mean we got Nakamura and Balor, but that was one. Even Orton and Balor was awesome. Um, you have Shane and Angle again. Um, Braun versus anyone's pretty cool. Um, but then Joe gets eliminated by Cena. Cena gets eliminated by Angle. It was kind of cool. Um, Orton eliminates Balor. So now you have Orton, Shane, Orton and Shane versus Kurt, Braun, and Triple H. God, no idea why Triple H really was still there. Um, and then Braun eliminates Orton, so it's Shane versus those three. Fucking Triple H turns on Angle, which is fine, whatever. Set up a match between them. Old guy versus old guy. Waste a mania match, but whatever. That's where my head's at at this point. And then you see him aligning with Shane McMahon. And, like, he looked too goofy and too, like, yeah, Shane, let's go, pick him up, come on. And I was like, all right, he's clearly just going to pedigree Shane. At first, I'm like, oh, shit, is he, we're doing a McMahon-Helmsley thing again? Um, with now with Shane and Stephanie and Trips and against Braun for some reason, just to make Braun even more over. But I don't know why they would turn Shane. Because turning Triple H face would be stupid. And then, obviously, he turns back to, to Raw. Braun and Triple H survive in a fucking pointless match. The only thing it did to improve was made Braun look a little better. And it made Triple H have three feuds now. He's feuding with Shane, he's feuding with Kurt, and he's feuding with Braun. Um, me and Matt were joking. It's like Triple H just set up three Mania matches for himself. And he's going to open with uh, Braun. And then or he's going to open with Shane, then fight Braun in the middle, and then main event with Kurt. Triple H. This was just such a bad pay-per-view. For such a stacked card. Only WWE could fuck it up like that. God damn it. Um, and if Triple H fucking faces Kurt at the Royal Rumble. Then Braun at Mania. It, it just, it, the only way to, that would work better. Is if Jason Jordan attacks Kurt. I don't know why he would ever help Triple H win. Unless Triple H cuts a deal with him. For something. I don't know. Um. But Braun, or Braun, Jordan needs to turn heel. He's just so not over. It's really not at die, Rocky die level, but it's not, it, it's not good. He's getting booed. Elias is getting cheered. Um, I'm pretty sure they chanted thank you, Triple H or something when he pedigreed him. It's just turn him heel against Angle. They could have a good match. Um, no, the ankle can still go. He looked gassed after one suplex last night. But man, this this year has not been great. We still got Class of Champions, which is a SmackDown pay per view, and then that's it actually. Hopefully, we start the year right with a uh, Royal Rumble being good next year. It's probably going to have Reigns win it um, to set up him versus Lesnar. Hopefully a SmackDown guy wins it. So they don't need to put Reigns over in the Royal Rumble to set up that feud. Because they really don't. But honestly, if I was booking, Braun would be my champ coming out of WrestleMania. He earned it. He's been the most over, the most entertaining, um, and the most... Just He's just been the best... Most consistent guy on the, the roster. Um, with no expectations of him being good as a singles wrestler. So, he would be my champ coming out. I mean, they already ruined it. They already had Brock versus Braun. Maybe do it in like a, a no-holds-barred match. That'd be sweet. Um, then I would have... I don't even know what I would do. SmackDown title... I mean, I'm not even that high on Nakamura anymore. Just because 
seeing it just seeing him every week like he's one of those guys it's like it wears down it's like how many like his entrance is it's great same with Balor though it's like their entrance is great at least Balor gimmicks up for the big matches but it's like every week you get all this stuff so Balor Nakamura or AJ Nakamura would be awesome as a match perspective like, who else would AJ face? Because AJ has to be the champ going into Mania. He, just, he got fucked last year. So did Owens. I think they need redemption. Um, obviously, Owens is on SmackDown, though. Owens versus AJ for the world title would be cool. I don't know. Now I'm just rambling. Um, I may make a video either, honestly, right after this or in a few days. Um, about Mania. Tickets have been bought. That's all I'll say for now. Thanks for sticking through this 26 minute video of me ranting. Needed to get it all out. Um, Raw tonight. I may just watch like the opening segment go to bed. I got work at 3 in the morning tomorrow. Um, so who knows how long it'll last. Thanks for watching.